So Paul, our sun has, through fusion, created this helium core that then burned hydrogen around it, that then reached a limit, and all of a sudden we had this huge flash go through in literally a couple of seconds. Which made no effect to the outside of the sun. This is not a supernova. That's right. So this is all going on in the inside. So, what is, so what's now happening on the inside of our sun? Well, the sun actually drops in brightness. Yep. What's called the horizontal branch. Or, um, and what we're now getting is we now have a core of carbon and oxygen. So this is where our helium core used to be. Yes, so the helium cores mostly turn into carbon oxygen. Uh -huh. um, and now we've got a helium burning shell around it. Okay, so, uh, so it's almost starting to feel like it's an onion almost, right? Absolutely, this is <laughs> onions all the way down. <laughs> so we layers, layers, layers. Layers, that's right. So we have our carbon oxygen core now surrounded by a shell of bur helium that's burning. So instead of the helium core with hydrogen around it, we now have carbon and oxygen with helium burning around that. Don't you love the late stages of stellar evolution? It's so complicated. So fun. <laughs> and then outside that, you'll have a layer of helium that's just sitting there doing not very much. So this is inert helium. Again, like we had that inert hydrogen on the outside when it was surrounded with the hydrogen. And now you've got a shell of burning hydrogen. <laughs> okay. And then you've got the hydrogen envelope on the outside. So we're, so we're really kind of repeating the process, but working our way down through the elements. That's right. And so you've now got a whole series of shells. Now the shells that sometimes vary. What's happening is you've got the hydrogen on the outside, and that's steadily being burnt as the shell of hydrogen moves outwards. Yep. And that's therefore dumping more helium at the bottom into this inert helium layer. Yep. The helium then accumulates, and it's got a shell of burning helium moving out of it, and that's all dumping carbon and oxygen yep. into the center. And this is a very luminous, as the sun now gets much brighter. And so it now, once again, starts to expand. So this is kind luminous. of similar to when we were doing that helium, it starts to get brighter yep. and expand. So we start off with just the burning hydrogen in the core. Yep. Then we end up with burning helium with a hydrogen shell. And as the shell moved out, it got brighter and cooler. Then suddenly the helium flash jumps down. Now it's got a core of carbon and oxygen yep. and possibly two shells, a, a helium burning shell and a hydrogen burning shell. And that's, you now, this is a peak power for the sun. Yep. So the sun's moment of glory <laughs> is its last moments. <laughs> so we're really talking about the final, this is the final se season of the star, if it were. Yes, yeah, so it's going out in a blaze of that's glory. Right. It's going to last party, it's going to be a good one. Okay. And it's not as simple as this. What's actually going to happen is at times you'll get a hydrogen shell burning and that'll pile up so much helium, the helium will burn faster and actually disrupt the hydrogen shell. Okay. Uh, and so you get a whole series of massive pulsations mm -hmm. when shells are disrupted and then reform. And so the sun actually goes through a series of huge pulses of brightness. Yep. Um, and um, at this point, the sun is getting really, really big. You've got a, this is how big the sun is now, the yellow circle, and the red circle is showing you the size of the sun. Wait, so, so this is what the sun's going to be? Yep. So this is the time when the sun gets to be so big that it will probably extend out to the Earth's orbit. So it's still cooler, but it's just much bigger and brighter. Yes. It was already big as a red giant, but now it's getting much bigger. It's a, so it's a red giant. really it's... rapidly expanding. Yes. Well, not necessarily rapidly. Sometimes it'll, it'll yeah. change in brightness quite a lot. Now, the yeah. details of this are actually very unclear. Mm -hmm. um, all the fusion is happening in a tiny core in the centre. Yep. So the centre is actually denser than it ever was. So now it's, it's this really packed in centre of all this crazy stuff happening. All the onions, yes. That's right, all the onions. Surrounded by this absolutely vast and incredibly tenuous outer layer. Yep. That layer has to be this big to radiate the enormous amount of power being produced by the core. Yep. So you've got this huge, and this is now incredibly low density. The models are unclear whether the, it'll actually extend out. It won't, most of the time it won't go out to the Earth. Yep. It'll be pulsing as the various shells form and disrupt themselves. And some of the peaks, it might just about reach out to the Earth. The Earth will have been baked solid by the radiation. I was going to say, the, we're still gone. Mercury, I still assume, is history. Mercury, yes. The Earth might actually even be included, still be intact. Okay. Because... The density of this is so very low, the Earth might actually orbit inside the Sun Interesting. Okay. for a, a few hundred thousand years or something like that. And because the density is so low, it might just stay there. But again, it doesn't really matter because it's still so hot and we are still long gone. Not that relevant to us. Now, at this point, we've talked about the solar wind. Yep. We're now talking about solar wind on steroids. Okay. <laughs> because, in fact, the outer part is now only very tenuously attached yep. to the centre. 
it's a long way out, there's a huge amount of radiation. And so at this point, the sun probably loses about half of its mass. Really? That's right. So basically almost all this hydrogen was just going to get blown out. Where does it get blown into? Well, it gets blown out into deep space, uh -huh. and we can see this around other stars like our own sun. This is what's called a planetary nebula. But, so I assume it has nothing to do with planetary, even though that's the name. It's a historical accident. <laughs> okay. Back in the <laughs> hundreds of years ago, people thought these things looked a bit like planets. Ah, okay, and so maybe that this was the beginning of a planet or something like that, so a planetary nebula, but <laughs> it's really driven by the star. Yes, and what we're going to have here is that you're basically only going to get the naked core left over, which before long is going to finish all its shells and just be a carbon oxygen white dwarf. Okay. Incredibly hot, but incredibly small, probably only about 6,000 kilometers across, about the size of the Earth. So you remember the sun was so much bigger than the Earth, and then it got even bigger still when it became a red giant. And now it's the size of the Earth. It's just a very hot, glowing white dwarf star. No more nuclear fusion. Uh, the shells have all run out of gas to burn into. You've just got this ball of carbon and oxygen. So it's kind of like just this ember still burning. It's not burning more fire, but it still has a lot of heat, and it's still yes. somewhat glowing. Because it's just come from the middle of a star with nuclear fusion. This is probably a temperature of tens of millions of degrees to begin with. It'll cool down fairly fast. That's right. This is back again what we were talking about early on, about could the sun be powered just by cooling down? The white exactly. dwarf is just powered by cooling down, and it can last longer. First of all, it starts at such a high temperature. Yep. And also because it's small, it means the heat can't get out so easily. That's right. Again, instead of the ginormous sun, it's only couple of thousand kilometers Because it worked out for the sun, it could only keep itself going for maybe a thousand years by cooling down, whereas yeah. this one's going to last millions of years. But it still has quite a lot of mass. Yes, it's still half the mass of the sun, roughly, yeah. uh, and it's starting off very hot. Okay. And the ultraviolet light from this very hot ball, because yep. remember, black body radiation, yep. it's going to be missing, this is going to be starting at temperatures of tens of thousands yes. of degrees, if not more. And that's going to zap all the gas that was blown out. So basically half the mass of the star is this white dwarf in the middle, and the yep. other half is this cloud of gas that's flying out into space. And this, and this U ultraviolet light is ionizing all this gas, zapping it as it goes out. It's knocking the electrons up the energy levels yep. as they come back down and get pretty pictures. Yes. And planetary nebulae are very pretty. I have to show you some more pictures of planetary nebulae. So are the colors related to what the shells are? Yes, so the colors, for example, the red here will be hydrogen. Yep. The green will probably be oxygen. The blue will be different oxygen yep. and so on. So we're looking at... Um, some of the material that was in the center has actually got blown out at this point. Okay. Because during these massive pulsations, that mixed the stuff up a bit. Yep. Previous to that, the outer layer of the sun was still the pristine, whatever it was when the sun formed. But you get what's called a dredge up yep. in these pulsations, and that will mix some of the interior stuff outwards. So it's still getting mostly hydrogen. Yep. Okay. But you are getting a few of the elements that were mixed. produced in the center squirted out, and they're now lit up by this. So we have this very still massive, about half the size, very, very hot white dwarf, not creating new nuclear fusion, not creating new energy or heat, but still, I wouldn't touch it, very hot, as you said, ionizing all of this gas that just got blown off in these pulsations. Right, and the gas will soon flow away into space and probably get incorporated in another, another giant molecular cloud and form another star at some point in the future, like we talked about earlier, um, just leaving the white dwarf, which will steadily cool down. Let's talk about a timeline for all this. Yeah, because we just talked about a lot of different things happening. Now, you know, I, I think the beginning's kind of easy to grasp, so to speak. It takes billions of years for the sun to use up all its hydrogen. But as you said, some of these things only take seconds. So what actually happens, in particular, in the later stages of the sun? Well, the human brain's not geared to deal with billions of years, not <laughs> even right. astronomer brains. No. <laughs> Our brains are pretty strange. Um, so let's do an analogy. Let's okay. shrink the entire life of the sun down to one year. So sun is... Born? Midnight. January 1st. When the fireworks go off. All right. Fireworks go off, the sun's born. Now, to begin with, it's powered by cooling down. And that was from that earlier graph where we started to see it actually starts to shrink a little bit. Yep. Have this it. is Kelvin's favorite. Yep. It's just no fusion. It's just shrinking. But that, that will keep you going until roughly midday on the 1st of January. So if we're By the time your hangover is going over. <laughs> so if we shrink our timeline, it's only lasting a few hours of the entire year, this little shrinking period. Yep. And then by about midday on the 1st of January, the sun has settled down on what we call the main sequence, which is burning hydrogen in the core. And this is the overwhelming majority of the lifespan of the sun. Okay, so the lifespan of the sun is going to be this 
normal nuclear fusion process of hydrogen, eventually through the PPE reaction turning into helium. That's right, and remember we saw that graph where the sun yep. slowly increases in brightness over billions of years. This keeps going for a long time. About middle of May, humans appear on Earth. Okay, and it, that makes sense, right? We know the sun's about 4.6 billion years old. Yep. Um, and we've appeared halfway roughly through it. We don't know how long humans are going to last on this time scale, but by July, in July, the sun is hot. It's, uh, uh, the sun is slow increases enough to boil the Earth's oceans. So seven months roughly into this whole process of a truncated timeline, that's when the sun starts to really pick up a little bit because it's steadily increasing the whole time. So it would have been cooler to begin with in January, and then it's got hotter and hotter. Um, that's when we start to know. That's when we start to feel it. That's when we start to boil the. Earth. Yes. <laughs> so that's, we feel it rather painfully, but we'd have <laughs> noticed it long before then, I imagine. Yep. Um, then. Still steadily, still burning hydrogen in the core, still getting brighter until we get to about the 23rd of December. So the 23rd of December is when we start the next phase. So we've gone 360, 357 days roughly of the entire year of essentially just main sequence of the majority just of its burning life. Hydrogen just burning hydrogen. But now we started to do the uh, hydrogen shell. We have this lump of helium on the inside, hydrogen burning on the outside. That's right. So now we're, now we're, now we're burning, um, we're, you know, we've got the core of helium not yep. doing anything and the shell of hydrogen and we become the red giant for the first time. Yep. And that keeps going until about uh, 26th of December, Boxing Day. So three days later, so we've gone for 357 days for most of it and then in three days we go, we use this all up. So the red giant period is, is very short. Very short. We see quite a few red giants if you look out at stars. That's simply because they're so bright we can see them at huge distances. So they're, they're a lot easier to see compared to the smaller, fainter uh, This is a main very brief star. period in the yep. general lifespan of our sun. Um, and after three days, on, on December 26th, you get the helium flash. Which is, in reality, it's in real seconds, not even timeline. So in this timeline, it's yeah, yeah. not it's, even there. And the sun shrinks back down to be a horizontal branch sub, sub giant or something like that. And it stays in that now with a carbon oxygen core and a helium shell and maybe a hydrogen shell that comes and goes until about 11 p.m. in the 31st of December. So we spend about three days doing this, about five days doing here. And then everything else happens in the last hour just before New Year. Right, so, so that whole talking about, we get the dredging up, we get the pulsating, we get this rapid expansion, the Earth is probably cooked, the sun's pulsating. That's all uh, the last hour before midnight on 31st of December. That's, that's it. The, yes. All of that stuff is just an hour of the entire year. And then, bang, fireworks go off, the core is blown away, you get a planetary nebula, which would only last like seconds on the scale. Yep. And then you've got the next decade or so as you're steadily cooling down white dwarf, starting off very hot and getting cooler and cooler and cooler. And the white dwarf presumably will last hundreds of billions of years, but the universe is only yeah. 14 billion years, so we don't even know what's going to happen. We just know it's going to last much longer than the whole year. But some of that gas, as you said, that got blown off, is it actually going to be turned into a Another whole, star, a whole, start the whole oh. thing again. <laughs>